What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Superfly, and I am super excited to chat with the VP of, or at least that that is your official title, right? The That's VP official, yep. Mm -hmm. VP of Fan Expo, Mr. Andrew Moyes. Uh, how are you doing today, good sir? I'm great, Chris. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, we are gearing up for the beginning of Toronto Comic Con at the beginning of this weekend. Uh, I believe March 15th to 17th. Uh, That's correct. Yep, down at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Yeah, it should be a super fun weekend. Me and my team here at OCAD U Live are going to be walking the floor, interviewing cosplayers, all that good stuff. I'm super excited. So, Andrew, would you mind telling us a bit about your role with uh, Touchwood PR and uh, Fan Expo as a whole? Yeah, for sure. So Touchwood is our PR firm, and I work specifically for Fan Expo HQ, uh, the larger organization that delivers both Toronto Comic Con and Fan Expo Canada Toronto to Toronto every year. Fan Expo HQ is actually the largest producer of uh, pop culture events globally. We do 16 of these events across Canada and the US now. So we are a big player in this space. And we're super excited to be able to use that leverage to deliver the biggest and the best to Toronto every year. But this is where it all started for us uh, 25 years ago when our president, Aman Gupta, uh, created Fan Expo. And uh, so we're really excited to continue that legacy. And as I say, deliver the biggest and the very best in pop culture to Toronto every year, both in March for this event and also in August for our big show. Man, that's super inspiring. That's super. I've always been curious. I feel like I already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask anyway. What came first, Toronto Comic Con or Fan Expo Toronto or Fan Expo Canada? Yeah, well, Fan Expo Canada was first. It started in the lobby of the Roy Thompson Hall, if you would believe. So that's really? where it's actually started out. And then over the years, it gained traction and popularity. And now it takes over the entire uh, uh, building of the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. There's not a broom closet that we don't use for that big show. And so what we found was that this is community driven, right? People want to come together. They want to celebrate with each other. They want to find like-minded people uh, that are into the same things and have that sense of community and shared passion. So we're giving everyone twice uh, of the opportunity to come together and celebrate. And Toronto Comic Con is really just a taste of all things fandom. It also falls really nicely in March break. So we know there's a lot of families that are out there looking to try and fill their calendars and work out what they're going to do um, with the family towards the end of that March break when they might be running out of some ideas. So it's a really great opportunity to bring the family down maybe all dress up together in the same costumes as a family and really uh, create those fans of the future uh, by getting a taste of, of a bit of a smaller show without all the pressures and crowds of, of the big show in August. I really appreciate that. That's a really great, what I really, what I've always like been drawn to in terms of both Fan Expo and Toronto Comic Con is like you said, the sense of community that it fosters among the fans of Toronto, how like it almost feels like even if you're like, <clears throat> excuse me, how it almost feels like even if you're coming across people who you don't know, it almost feels like there's this shared sense of belonging because you're you're experiencing things with people who are fans just like you are, who grew up watching the same things you did. And as someone who grew up, like, as someone who is, like, a bit too obsessed with, like, nerd culture and, like, Marvel and DC and Power Rangers and, like, all that type of thing, it's something that I always take, like, a great deal of, like, comfort in going to cons every year. Yeah, well, I mean, look, in our world, you can never be too obsessed with this kind of stuff. We welcome that. We encourage that. And that's what we see at our shows. I mean, people share their passions. And uh, we see that demonstrated in the amazing costumes that people uh, come and, and wear at our events, but also just in the friendships and connections that are made at this show. I mean, we've seen wed marriage proposals. We've seen weddings. We've seen long-time friendships that are developed waiting in line or just connecting in a panel with someone that you end up sitting next to each other and finding, as you say, that you find that uh, shared passion. So uh, it's about community, it's about connection. And as you say, most certainly about belonging because everyone's welcome. Wow, marriage proposals and weddings at, at a con is just like, is an interesting concept to me. <laughs> I'm picturing like, I don't know, like a, like a, 
Star Wars homage to like Anakin and Padme's wedding and like cosplay and that type of thing. What was do you remember or like know anything about what that was like? Well, I mean, I, it was actually in the captain's chair. So we it was more Star Trek oriented. We had a captain's chair at one of our events and, you know, they were sitting on the chair and then, of course, just went down on one knee. So, you know, there's it, it can happen anywhere. And that's the nature of it. That's the nature of our events because it's a celebration. People are looking and they're having life changing moments um, across the show floor. And that's what we're so excited to create and deliver every year. Wow, that's incredible, man. That's incredible. So speaking of cosplays, speaking of like people who are like super passionate about like dressing up as their favorite characters, can you think back to any of like the wildest or like most elaborate cosplays you've ever seen in your years working for working with Fan Expo Toronto? Yeah, well, I think over the years, I think the craftsmanship has really improved. Um, you know, it's no longer go into your closet and find a few things to throw together. Although that is, again, more than welcome for people that are more the novice cosplayers. But if you look at like the 501st, I mean, you're looking at, so the 501st is a, a community um, organization, charity driven, that builds um, movie set quality Star Wars uh, costumes. So that's why when Toronto Comic Con is in town, we see um, the stormtroopers on the subway. And it's so lifelike because they really do, down to every specific detail, create sort of movie replica quality uh, costumes. Um, so I, I think I've seen that increase and, and develop. People invest a lot of time and a lot of money um, delivering really, really high quality movie quality uh, costumes. I mean, you think about Iron Man, for instance, you know, over the years, I've seen that go from, again, um, a not so well crafted to all the lights, all the moving pieces, all the mechanics, you know, so it's it's really fantastic to see how a passion for cosplay has caught on and, and um, it's become not only a way to express, but also a way to really express your um, talent for craftsmanship as well. Yeah, cosplay is like, as someone who like considers himself a bit more of like a kind of novice pseudo cosplayer myself, like it's always fun watching, like, especially when you see the same people coming back year after year and you're able to see that progression in their craft evolve over time. It's always super like rewarding for like just me to watch. So uh, moving along, like what are some fun events or like fun attractions that like fans can be excited to see at Toronto Comic Con this year? Well, one thing that fans love to do when they come to the show is shop. I mean, we talk about celebrities a lot. We talk about all the hours of programming. But one of the key reasons you come down is to shop. We have hundreds of uh, retailers who can help you find that hidden piece for your collection or start a new collection or just have unique items that may not be available at a lot of the big box stores. We have hundreds of artists as well. And those artists have unique one-of-a-kind items you're actually buying from the artist so that's really cool for those um one-of-a-kind unique pop culture finds we have a really nice activation with the x-men uh, 97 piece this year um yeah that's going to be really cool i think saturday morning they're doing a a serial activation you know we all used to sit down and watch that Saturday morning uh, cartoon. So they're kind of replicating the energy of that. So that'll be uh, really, really cool. Uh, the cosplay red carpet is always exciting. That's an opportunity as, as we were discussing, whether you are a avid cosplayer or if you're just starting out, it's a really low pressure way to walk the red carpet, be cheered on by your fellow fans and celebrate the costume that you've created. So, so many different things for everyone to see and do. We do actually have a great family zone as well. So, and that's not just a place where you drop off the kids and, you know, and, and they sort of sit watching telly. It's a really great interactive um, uh, area where they, the, the whole family can get exposed to different layers of creativity and how comics work and how different pieces of pop culture work. So honestly, you've got to head to torontocomiccon.com to check out everything because there's just so many layers to these events, it's impossible to capture it all. Yeah, I guess you could say cons are like ogres or onions. They have lots of layers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 100%, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for this interview, Andrew. Super informative. It has done 
if anything, it's made me like even more excited to attend Toronto Comic Con this this season. So I'm look, I'm really looking forward to it, and yeah, hope to see you guys there.